my dearest Maybelline. <laughs> it has been four months since I've been away from home, away from the morning cries of the roosters, from chimes of the rusted old church bells, and from you. As in my right list, the sun has taken its nightly slumber beneath the speckled hills of Pennsylvania, coloring the sky in purples and pinks and reds like God's own paintbrush, lining up the evening with one final smile. But that smile is nonetheless nowhere near as bright as yours, Maybelline, for I know that yours is just for me. And it brings me such comfort even as my brothers fall around me in this great and terrible world. In my moments of darkest despair, I find my thoughts drift to you, and I weep, knowing you are so very far. It would give me much relief, Maybelline, if I might have a token to remember you by. For while I will always see your visage in my mind's eye, this world is the darndest thing to a man's memory. Perhaps if I could procure a photograph of your likeness, <laughs> give me strength in these troubling times, it would do my health some good to awaken besides your lovely face. And then, if you can find the time in the day, I'll be truly delighted to have in my possession a second full of poetry, portraying not just your blessed face, but your whole form. <laughs> <laughs> and I might suggest, even the prolonged nature of the poetry taking process, and the sweltering heat during this time of year, that if you were to perhaps Remove your heavy garments. <laughs> As it suits you, then, you might appear clothed in only what the Lord gave you, with your swooping shoulders, ample rosy bosoms, and glistening thighs visible in all of this. <laughs> and all, oh, if the Lord allows it, to behold a further image of your voluptuous form from another angle. <laughs> Brian Wood, 8th Cavalry Regiment, General Lee's Army.